A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 66, completing the piping of the live steam injector. This is the water inlet fitting on the drag beam. This will connect via a water tap to a water tank in the driving truck. In this clip, I'm tightening the nut that locks the fitting to the drag beam. And here I'm checking that there are enough threads for the union nut. And as you can see, everything is fine in this area. This next part of the job was the most difficult, bending the pipework. I used my pipe bender for this, and I had to make an S-bend very close together, and to get it right it took two attempts. First of all, I bent it like this, and one end fits into the water inlet of the injector. The pipe will need to be cut shorter than this because it's a bit long. By this stage of the job, the pipe was looking a bit bendy because I did it from both ends as the first attempt was a failure. Finally, I got everything to be in the right position. This is quite a complex bend. It's really important to make sure that this water pipe is not directly under the overflow. That would not be good because the hot water from the overflow would heat the incoming water and injectors don't like that. As you can clearly see in this clip, the pipe is bent in two ways. Obviously, the main bend up to the water inlet of the injector, then it bends again as it moves backwards. Also, I have to take into consideration the hole in the footplate and the piece of silicone rubber around the pipe. This needs to remain in the centre of the hole, and it does. In this clip, I'm double-checking that the pipe clears the overflow, and indeed it does. The next part of the job is to make a special long pipe that goes all the way to the check valve in the boiler from the injector's outlet underneath the footplate. This is quite difficult. It would be simpler if it was 3 16 pipe, but it's not. It's quarter pipe. So you don't get too many attempts at bending this before it work hardens. Also, the check valve end, the thread, is 1 8 BSP. I need to modify the union nut to take a standard quarter inch diameter union cone. Here I'm checking the external diameter of a commercial union cone for quarter inch pipe. After doing this, I simply drill a hole in the end of the union nut the same size. Or to be more exact, slightly bigger so it clears. When I tighten the union nut complete with the cone onto the check valve, everything's fine. It's a nice tight fit. Now for the difficult part. The first thing to do is to use my pipe bender and bend the pipe at right angles to go from where you see it here up to the check valve. I bent the pipe first, then cut it to the correct length. This part of the pipe needs to follow the other piece of pipe. So I've created a double bend by hand so it follows the line of the other pipe. This next bit was really difficult to do. I was so lucky I got it right first time. I had to bend the other pipe with the pipe bender so it came back on itself to fit to the outlet of the injector. Feeding the pipe through was beginning to be quite difficult. There was only one route it could follow. And the end of the bend had to end up exactly in the right place at the injector's outlet. The piping job on this engine is more difficult than it first appears, as you will find out when I pipe both the twin axle pump and the hand pump to the check valve on the other side of the boiler, using a special double union, with two more check valves so the water goes into the boiler and not back through each pump. What you've been watching on screen is the final cleanup operation, using some Brasso wadding, followed by polishing it with a cloth. I silver soldered two unions, one at each end of the piece of pipe. The one for the injector, of course, is flat, and the one that fits to the check valve is a standard coned union. I mentioned in a previous episode, the reason for the flat cones on an injector is so that once you loosen the nuts, you can just move the injector out of position without having to bend the piping to clear the cone points. I'm making sure that the union nut tightens OK. Here, I'm still bending the pipe slightly so that it lines up with the existing pipe along the side of the frames. Here's the injector underneath the foot plate, and all I have to do now is connect the outlet pipe to it. I really was surprised when this just fitted into place straight away. It is not always the case. The paint on the injector has chipped because it's been kicking around in the workshop for a while. I'll touch it in with some paint before I finish the job.
The piping on this engine is going to be tricky. This, for instance, is nothing to do with the injector. This is a union fitted to the water bypass system, which allows full control of the amount of water going from the twin axle pump into the boiler. These are water pipes, and the bottom one is from the outlet from the pump, the one on the left goes to the bypass valve, and the one on the right goes to the check valve on the boiler at the other side. Time for a final check of the position of the silicone rubber on the steam pipe from the valve on the turret. And I'm pleased to say that the injector is now fully piped, and this should work fine once the engine is in steam and it has a suitable water supply. That's it for this one, but there will be more piping in the next episode, the axle pump and the hand pump. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.